Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? This morning, we're going to be reading out of Psalm 30, verse 6. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. And that's the verse. Now, in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Let's try to get some context on this. We're going to go to verse 1. Joy comes with the morning. A psalm, a song at the dedication of the house of David. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You've kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now, in my prosperity, I said I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and the Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will you, will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? So the point he's trying to make is, what what good is it for me to fall or to die and, and go away? <laughs> Who's going to proclaim the Lord? Who's going to proclaim his truth? A lot of times we misunderstand why the Lord would give certain people such long life. Maybe that's the reason. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And this is what we're called to do. Those are the fruits of our lips. The fruits of praise, the fruits of worship, the, the fruits of thanksgiving. The Bible has verses that talk about all this stuff. Moab settled on his lees. He hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Give a man wealth, let his ships bring home continually rich freights. Let the winds and waves appear to be his servants, to bear his vessels across the bosom of the mighty deep. Let his lands yield abundantly. Let the weather be propitious to his crops. Let uninterrupted success attend him. Let him stand among men as a successful merchant. Let him enjoy continued health. Allow him, with braced nerve and brilliant eye, to march through the world and live happily. Give him the buoyant spirit. Let him have the song perpetually on his lips. Let his eye ever be sparkling with joy and the natural consequence of such an easy state to any man. Let him be the best Christian who ever breathed will be presumption. Even David said, I shall never be moved. And we are not better than David, nor half so good. Brother, beware of the smooth places of the way. Here's the, here's the, here's the reason why we warn when things are good. We have to be careful. We have to be vigilant. Beware of the smooth places of the way. If you are treading them, or if the way be rough, thank God for it. If God should always rock us in the cradle of prosperity, if we were always dandled on the knees of fortune, if we had not some stain on the alabaster pillar, if there were not a few clouds in the sky, if we had not some bitter crops in the wine of this life, we should become intoxicated with pleasure. We should dream, we stand, and stand we should, but it would be upon a pinnacle, like the man asleep upon the mast, each moment we should be in jeopardy. <coughs> the people that went up in the old days when they used the sailing ships, the main mast, the they would always send a watch up there. And he had certain duties that he had to do. But you know, you're up there, you're in the breeze, it's comfortable, it's mostly quiet. And uh, it's pretty easy to doze off and fall asleep. 
Well, if the ship hits rough water while you're up there or a rogue wave comes through and tosses the ship back and forth, that person sitting on top of that mast could be slung hundreds of yards away from the ship. And if nobody's paying attention, they might not even see it. You know, the amount of, of lever leverage is, that's involved when that mast swings, it's quite a bit. For every foot the ship tilts, that mast can travel 10 feet or more, depending on how tall it is. So yeah, it's dangerous. When you're driving in a car, comfortable seats, cut the radio on, some elevator music, the road is smooth, it's easy to drift off to sleep and then just careen off into a ravine somewhere and nobody know. We always complain about that seat that's got that spring poking us in the back or in, in the back side. And uh, it's actually a good thing because it keeps us awake. And so we can't get too comfortable with this life. Too comfortable with how things are going. If things are going good, praise God. All the more praise God. But in your praises, ask him, Lord, when the tough times come, I pray that you prepare me now for them. So that I will continue to praise you and glorify you and give thanks to you. We bless God. Then for our afflictions, we thank him for our changes. We extol his name for losses of property. For we feel that he had not chastened us thus. We might have become too secure. Continued worldly prosperity is a fiery trial. Afflictions, though they seem severe, in mercy oft are sent. Sometimes we need reminders of what this world really is. It would be better if you had constant, and I say this and a lot of people would disagree with me, but it would be better if you had constant trial of some kind to remind you of who you are, who he is, and where we stand than for things to suddenly be super good and for you to get a chance to sit back and relax. This life is very short, so this life with trials is nothing compared to eternity of bliss. And so it should be, it should be, we should come to a place in our development and our sanctification where we would rather have trial of some kind to remind us of the truth, remind us of where we are, where we stand, who we are. Because compare this life, if this life was all trial, to the life to come, to eternal bliss forever and ever. It's nothing. There's no comparison. For us, from our perspective, it seems like a long time, and it gets very tiring and very daunting. You get to the place where you you really struggle. But like I said before, and, and in, even in recent videos, when you stand in heaven, one minute with Jesus is enough to wipe out an entire lifetime of trials and troubles. One hour in heaven, and you'll wonder, and you'll proclaim, why did I ever doubt? Why did I ever fear? Why did I ever struggle? Because none of those things had any, had, were never going to stop me from getting here. Why did I ever think they would? This life <laughs> is just transition. So it'll be over soon enough. All we have to do is overcome, hold our ground, stand strong in the faith. And it would be better if we had a little trials, if we had some pains that slowed us down, if we had some persecutions here and there, if we had some issue that kept us from being too comfortable, because it's really easy to get too comfortable. In the military, we, we call that complacency. Complacency kills. You get too complacent in your duties, things go wrong very quickly. One of my, well, some of my buddies that were in another uh, squadron were uh, taking supplies and dropping them off at uh, another military base down there in Iraq. And they made the trip a bunch of times. There was no issues. 
Everything went real smooth. Everything was quiet. No problems. And so they got a little relaxed, stopped looking, stopped watching. And they drove through, a, and they had passed this little section. They were on their way to Husania, but they passed through this little section where there were some buildings. And uh, it was a it was a closed up street a little bit. And they just had to pass through, make a right, and then go on down, and then that was it. Well, they didn't they didn't watch. And on this go around, when they went through, somebody had in in the wall had installed what's called an EFP. It's an energy force projectile. And what it is, is they put plates of copper into an opening or over an opening. And behind that, they'll put HME, homemade explosives. Very powerful, made out of fertilizer and diesel fuel. And when they, it's ignited, the energy comes out of the tube. And it hits that copper plate and it forms it into a giant copper bullet and it superheats it. And you think copper soft, well, when you do that to it, it'll pass through anything. And it blew through our up-armored LMTVs like it was butter. And so they had one, it was a triple. And when it went off, because they weren't watching, and they drove over a pressure, pressure plate, and it, when it went off, it shot into the vehicle. With very bad results. After that happened, and they lost some people, and they never got complacent again. Now, what happened after that point was that every time they went out, somebody was trying to get at them. And so they became very, very aware, and they became very di diligent in paying attention. But what did it cost? It wasn't just the people that got hurt, but it was the people that were there. All those lives had changed forever. Everybody that witnessed it, everybody that was in the vehicle, those lives changed forever. And so, if we know that the possibility is there, that the devil could come for us whenever we hit the pinnacle of our comfort, in fact, he waits for those moments because he loves to get us and bring us down as much as possible. Why don't we prepare ourselves ahead of time and always be ready? And a lot of people say, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Welcome to the club. We're all tired and exhausted. But let us not let our guard down now. Let us not look away now. You go to a movie and you're watching the movie and then all of a sudden... Somebody's this, somebody's that. Oh, I'm out of popcorn. I'm, I want to go get a drink. I need to go to the bathroom. But it's at the best part of the movie. And you heard that there's a really trick ending and you don't want to miss it. And that one moment that you lean forward to set a cup on the floor or to pick it up or to get up or you look away at the person next to you and you miss the scene you were waiting for. Let us not look away. Let us not get up to go to the bathroom. Let us not go get some more popcorn or another drink. Instead, let us pay attention. Because what the world is doing right now is changing and being prepared for that time that's coming that's called the tribulation. Being made ready for those events that are going to unfold. We're seeing the beginning of them already. We have for years. And so let us not lose our focus concerning our own lives let us not let us not let our guard down because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking to see whom he may devour it'd be very easy for us to just sit back relax and say i'm gonna let the lord worry about it and not be diligent not pay attention and then all of a sudden we're caught unawares it can happen and it'll happen as close to home as your own family member so be careful, stay focused, stay true, and don't let your guard down. Because it only takes that one time for everything to change very badly. Stay diligent in prayer, stay diligent in your scripture reading. <clears throat> don't let somebody else have the responsibility of reading the Bible, you read it.
and watch and pray. Pray that we don't fall into temptation. Pray that we aren't caught unawares. Pray that we can see the trouble coming and, and hide ourselves until it passes. Because things right now still are pretty good. Things right now still are pretty quiet. That can change real quick. And if, uh, if scripture is any telltale of what's coming, things are going to change really quick. When? Don't know. But we know it's going to happen. And with the current signs in the world today, it looks like it's pretty close. And so don't give the devil a place. Don't give those people who are working for him and serving him a place where they might take try to take an opportunity. Stay strong, stay vigilant, vigilant, be aware, and stay prayerful. And then no matter what comes, we won't be surprised. We won't be caught off guard, and it won't be a shock to us, because we'll already have seen it coming. The Lord wants us prepared for what's coming. He wants us to be aware of how things are going to fall. That's why we have this book. That's why we have this Bible that tells us all these things. And so all we have to do is do what it says. Simple. And then no matter what's going on, whether things are good or bad or anywhere in between, it will not catch us off guard because we will already have been prepared and prepared ourselves for it. And in that, the Lord gets glorified. And it's all to hit praise of his name that we are ready and prepared and not caught unawares. So don't get too comfortable. Don't sit back and relax. Because you never know when everything is going to change instantly. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. And to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. It is remarkable that things have been so so good, so quiet. I and mean, we, we complain about how things are, yet, yet th things are still pretty smooth. Things are still pretty laid back and quiet, but how quickly can they change? How how fast can everything go a completely different direction? And, it, you know, many of us, our p past lives that we've lived already, the, the, the when we were kids, when we were just coming into adulthood, you know, that's all examples of what we're talking about here, how things can change so quickly. Some of us, things were going good, and then things went in a very weird direction. Some of us, things were bad and came up and got good again and then went back. And some of us, it's been up and down constantly all our lives. Lord, may we always be thankful no matter what the situation. May we always give praise no matter what's going on. And may we always live in a way that glorifies your name, glorifies what you're doing. It is an, is an example of the patience and love of the saints and the love of Jesus Christ in our hearts, no matter what the situation is, whether things are bad or even, and especially if things are good, that we're always thankful, aware, paying attention, focused on what you have told us to do. Because if we can find a way to achieve even a small amount of that, what difference it makes in our lives when troubles do come and we're not caught off guard. We're not unaware. We were watching for it and we were aware that it could happen and our hearts were already prepared for it. And so in those moments, no matter no matter when it happens, no matter what happens in those moments, we can come to you and say, Lord, you warned us and I saw it and I was already ready for it. I thank you that your word was true and I thank you that you have made us aware of this and prepared our hearts ahead of time you to, to your praise and to your glory on your holy name that we may stand firm in these troubled times that we may always be diligent in these good times that we may stand no matter what's happening for truth in your word and in faith trusting and putting our full hope in you it is all to your glory lord it is all to your praise and if we can bring ourselves to that place, then there's nothing that happens that will catch us off guard. There is nothing that will surprise us. And then when the devil comes, when he sends one of his lackeys to come and to tempt us or to catch us off guard or, or something to make us miserable, we are already aware it's going to happen. 
we were already prepared for it. And so there's no surprises. Lord, you warned us over and over again, and you gave us all of your, your word to tell us these things and to make us aware of these things so that we won't struggle. But we'll understand why it has to happen that way. And that in and of itself makes life easier. Knowing the truth and knowing how it's going to unfold in some way makes it easier. And when the really rough times come, it's no big deal because we were already prepared for it. And we already know what to do. And your name, no matter what, will still be praised. Thanksgiving will still be on our lips to our glorious God. That's a supernatural faith. And that's the kind of faith that we want. Lord, give us that kind of faith. Faith that moves mountains. Faith that changes the course of rivers. A faith that, faith that believes and trusts and hopes in you, no matter what the situation. All for your glory. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. It is an amazing thing when you come to that place where things are rough, things are good, things are rough, things are good. I can tell you stories um, my whole life, just from the time I was a kid, back to my earliest memory. Just, just, I mean, right now, things now are the best they've ever been in my life. And, and I could sit here and tell you things that aren't good now, but they the best they've ever been. What do I have to complain about? What do I have to complain about? Nothing. And so my praise should be for the Lord at all times. Even if things get rough now, I remember back when I was a kid how bad they really were. I mean, we were living in a 65 Dodge van that was converted, had the, had, the, had the camper conversion, still to this day haven't been able to find another one. I love that van, it was very cool, but it had a little camper conversion in it. We, uh, we lived in that, and then at one point had a school bus that was from the Rose Bowl in Oklahoma that was converted into a hunting bus. And then at one point got down to a 78 Olds Delta 88, and we were sleeping on the hood or in tents or whatever we, we had, we had uh, going from campground to campground or living on the beach. So, it's been way worse than this. How dare I complain about my situation now when I've had it way worse? Now more than ever, when things are good, we should be glorifying God and thanking Him and blessing Him. So that when things do change, when and if it happens, there's no, there's no cutoff of those things because we know it all comes from the Lord and it's all working for our good because the Bible says that it having a different view of how this stuff unfolds is a very interesting frame of mind and a lot of people won't, won't understand it but it's to his praise and to his glory that we be that way because then we become what's called in our world or here here on this world an eternal optimist and when people say that, I'll say, yeah, but what I refer to it as is a faithful Christian. Because I know my Lord is bringing me through all this, no matter what it is. And it's barely a blip on the radar compared to the eternity that awaits us all. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.